which of the following is a cis alkene? So cis and trans are terms that we use for di-substituted cycloalkanes or di-substituted alkenes. So we can use these for di-substituted alkenes. And so here's what we're looking for. You're comparing the hydrogens on those alkenes. So a di-substituted alkene means that off of these two carbon atoms, um, you have to have a hydrogen. So if your hydrogens are on the same side, and now here would be your substituents, right? So that's why we say it's di-substituted. There's two substituents on those alkene carbons. If they are on the same side, then that is cis. If those substituents or those hydrogens is really what we're looking at, but by default also the substituents, if they're on opposite sides, then that is trans. So if we take a look at this first alkene, we actually only have one hydrogen. So this is a, a tri-substituted alkene. So we can't describe this via cis or trans. And for, so how we're getting tri-substitute, just to be really, really clear about this, is we're looking at these alkene carbons and saying, how many bonds to substituents do they have to things that are not hydrogen? And so we have one, two, three carbon atoms. That's why that's tri. Um, and furthermore, we've got this symmetrical group here. So we don't actually have any stereochemistry with this alkene. If we were to switch two groups on either side of the alkene, we would end up with the same molecules. So we also say that this alkene is not stereoisomeric. And that's particular to this alkene. We can certainly have a tri-substituted alkene that has stereochemistry. We just wouldn't be able to describe it with cis or trans. We would have to move on to E or Z. Okay, so let's look at B. So we want to see where the hydrogens are in the alkene. So we can only see from this alkene. So here's our alkene carbons. We can see two bonds to substituents. So this is a di-substituted alkene. And we are always bisecting the molecule right through the pi bond. And so the bonds that we cannot see that are implied here are these bonds to hydrogen. Right? And so you might ask, how do we know what angle to put those at? So we need to remember that our alkene carbons are sp2 hybridized. So that means that they are trigonal planar. So that's a concept we saw earlier on. But that tells me where to put this hydrogen because if it's trigonal planar, I want to have those 120 degree bond angles. So that tells me exactly where to put those hydrogens and I can see that they are on the same side. So this is cis. So we found the right answer, but let's keep going and look at the other two alkenes for a little bit more practice. And so if we look at C, here are our alkene carbons. We have one, two bonds to substituents. So this is a di-substituted alkene. Um, so it is possible that it could have cis or trans. So let's kind of bisect through the center of that. And again, we're gonna place in our hydrogens by remembering that this is trigonal planar. So we wanna have these 120 degree bond angles when we put in our hydrogens. And we see that they are on opposite sides. So this is trans. Okay, so that's definitely not a cis alkene. And then if we look at D, D is similar to A. So we have, those are alkene carbons, one, to three substituents. So this is again a tri-substituted alkene. So we have only one hydrogen and here it is. And like A, we've got some symmetry. We've got two ethyl groups on the same carbon. So if you switch those, you're still gonna have the same alkene. So this is still an alkene that is not stereoisomeric, which means it doesn't have a stereoisomer. So we wouldn't have to have any terminology in the front of the name representing that stereoisomer. So our option here is, is B for the cis alkene. Um, if you do have a tri-substitute alkene that does have stereochemistry, we simply can't use cis or trans. We need to move on to the E and Z system of alkene nomenclature.